My name's Oriel Butcher. I'm the sister and nearest relative by law of the person whose issues I'm talking about in this video. This video is primarily intended for the Devon Partnership Trust as I'm not able to attend the meeting that is taking place next week. However, I'd also like to direct it to the general mental health services and health services in general, those who create the legislation as as well as those who carry out the duties and responsibilities, as well as to the Department of Work and Pensions, the police force and all of those who work within the community to support people who have mental health problems. A brief background to the, to the current situation. My sister and I come from a mixed race background and we grew up living abroad in many different countries and relating to many different cultural situations, primarily in our early years in Africa and later on in Asia and the Indian continent. My sister has now got a 16 year record of mental health difficulties and she has been in and out of hospital throughout that time. Many of her experiences with hospital and mental health services have been bad experiences that have left her traumatised. This, this has re recently been acknowledged by, by the, the mental health professionals and recognised. However, it's left her in a state where she will not engage with anybody at, at this time. A recent full independent psychiatric report confirms this situation and confirms that she's had a diagnosis of paranoid schizophrenia for many of those years. She's also recently had two mental capacity assessments done by her GP, confirming that she doesn't have the mental capacity to understand certain situations. However, over the last four years, she ha and partly due to her refusal to engage, she has been off medication and she'd been doing really well with this, recently showing some, some astonishing progress. Two years ago, as a result of this, the mental health team decided to take her out from under their direct care and trying to enforce medication onto her. Unfortunately, at the same time, the Housing Association announced that they were going to try to evict her. Because she was no longer under the direct care of the mental health services, they were unable to help with the situation and refused to give any further advice or support. The council refused to give advice or, or support as well, and they are now being investigated by some litigation solicitors. I have spent two years trying to support my sister to prevent this um, eviction and um, there is a firm of solicitors involved and the official solicitor who works for the Ministry of Justice in London is also overseeing the case. We've identified in our defence that the Housing Association have been in breach of the Equality Act on a number of counts, serious counts. However, throughout this period, no support has been available and this has also meant that her benefits were cut off I wasn't informed that that was due to happen and she doesn't have the mental capacity to be able to follow through and complete and sign forms and send them back. I found out accidentally uh, um, last year that she had had no benefits at all for six weeks during the winter. So until I was able to resolve that, I did her shopping for her and provided her with cash. More recently, her disability living allowance was also stopped in December and I found out about that again accidentally around six weeks ago. I've now been able to arrange for a meeting so I might be able to act on her behalf to, to, to reclaim benefits for her. However, it's meant that she has spent the majority of the winter living without electricity I work for a charity, so when I can, I pay for her, but I cannot always do that. I would like to suggest some basic steps that the, the professionals might be able to make in order to help this situation. 
The situation has arisen in the first instance as my sister did not fall under anybody's particular duty of care. I feel that there's a need for the professionals involved in care to widen their scope of their remit so that they are able to act when they see that there is an identified need and that nobody is able to pick up on, on that need. The professionals don't know how to communicate with Fiona and how to encourage her to re-engage with them and they turn to me for, for ideas. My stance is that I need to be her sister to be there to support and love her but I'm not a professional, I don't know where to turn for help and they should be able to give me at the very least that advice instead of wasting more of my time through bureaucracy and incompetencies and losing paperwork and losing um, information that should be passed between themselves. Furthermore, I feel that there needs to be much clearer and consistent inter interdepartmental communication between all the professionals. Please don't waste any more of my time. I work full time already and every minute that I spend helping my sister doesn't mean that that work just goes away. It means that sometimes I work until four o'clock in the morning in order to, to, to complete my responsibilities both to my work and to my sister. What makes this further difficult is that most of the agencies operate only within working hours. That means that for somebody like me who works full time, I have to take time out of work to be able to do that. Not all people are able to do that and for me it causes great difficulty. I'm the director of teacher training in the organisation that I work for and I train myself, I teach. There are times when it's impossible to, to be able to take the time to support my sister without jeopardising the needs of the trainees who I work with. Please don't waste any more of my time. I would like to suggest that some of these agencies ought to work outside of, a, of normal working hours, as in fact my organisation does in order to provide the support that people need. We do it for the same amount of money as we do when we work in working hours. It shouldn't cost more. Sometimes I'm totally confused about the situation, who I'm talking to, what their responsibilities are and which department they belong to. If I'm confused, my sister must be very, very confused. It's not helpful. I would like to ask that there's more a wider range of culturally appropriate care available and that people are able to see how the value of this could, could support their clients and, and patients. I'd like to suggest that if somebody doesn't fit into a box, make a new one and create smart targets that will allow that box to fit into your criteria so that you are able to support this person appropriately. That must be a cheaper solution than somebody ending up back in hospital on a repeated basis or be having to go into hostels and, and special housing to support them. My sister is making excellent recovery and progress at the moment and from where both of us are sitting right now it looks as though those who are supposed to be supporting her are actually acting to prevent that progress. I would like more honesty from the services. Yesterday for the first time ever, a doctor acknowledged to me that the area of the country where we live in is widely known for being the worst area for racial discrimination. That's something that I have witnessed occurring to my sister that has helped to make her illness worse and her fear of the services stronger. Nobody has ever been brave enough to acknowledge that before. It needs to be acknowledged before it can be addressed. Please acknowledge it and please act on that and please make sure that it doesn't happen and can't happen and that it isn't something that is known and accepted and kept silent. I've only been able to provide the support and the time, the hundreds of hours, the thousands, the tens of thousands of words that I have had to write 
to protect my sister because I'm a very literate person, because I understand the Equality Act as a result of my work, because I have access to computers and technology and research, because I'm mostly able to answer the telephone during the daytime and respond with immediate emails if necessary, because I work for a caring organisation that is a charity that I work incredibly hard for, but who recognise that there are times when I need to take care of my life and so they are willing to, to be flexible in when I do my work and how I choose to do it so far as reasonably possible. I don't have children of my own and I have an enormously strong commitment to ensuring that vulnerable people are protected and cared for. If I didn't have all of those qualities and circumstances to support me, I wouldn't have been able to stop my sister from being made homeless, ending up either back in hospital or committing suicide. I do not think that the majority of relatives have all of those surrounding circumstances to be able to support them. And to me, that means that then the majority of people who need help are lost to the system and lost to themselves those people who could be making good recovery and good progress actually end up either costing the system more or costing the system nothing because they die. They have things to offer us. In addition to my sister's care, as I've said, I work full time in a responsible job that I love very much. That means that I do significant numbers of overtime hours in order to support my role and provide as excellent a service as I possibly can. My partner has signed off work with depression and he isn't in receipts of any benefits, so I support him financially as well and emotionally. Things at home are not always as easy as they could be. Furthermore, my mother is going to be 80 this year. I would like to be able to give her more time than I already do. Please, don't waste any more of my time. Please look for ways that you can support me and my sister rather than making our lives more difficult. Thank you for listening.